Welcome to iTalk from the European Parliament here in Brussels. Your chance to put your questions to our continent's leading decision makers. My name is Alex Taylor and I'm here to make sure you get to the answers. Our guest today is Vivian Heding, Vice President of the European Commission in charge of justice, fundamental rights and citizenship. Vast uh, subjects to cover. Hello, thank you very much for being with us. It's um, a pleasure. This is Reading. Uh, uh, quick questions, quick answers. The principle of iTalk. Let's have a look at the first question. Well, I'm Lena Yerhanzi, I'm from Greece. The question I would like to ask is, um, although the Charter of Fundamental Rights does not give any specific competence to the European Commission to, do, uh, to take positive action in the field of uh, fundamental rights, whether Ms. Redding would think that such positive action is needed in order to put uh, fundamental rights in effect, because up till now, um, these rights just remain theoretical. Does the Charter have much clout? Isn't it just uh, ideas? It is very much about ideas and I think it's important because it lays down the values of Europe. Some of those values go into national law and some of those values go into European law. When we speak about the free movement of citizens, for instance, is one of the biggest rights of European citizens. It is laid down in the Charter and it has to be applied by Europe. Do you think it's being applied more or less by uh, national governments? Well, uh, that depends. Uh, the Schengen uh, ag Agreement, for instance, is one to be overseen by European Union and by the Commission. And the Commission is just doing that. We will come out with a review of uh, the Schengen Acquis in order to reinforce the rights of the citizens to free movement. Well, we have a question actually about that straight away. Let's, uh, let's look at our next uh, question. Hello, I'm Saad Nihat from Belgium. Do you think the closing of certain portions of the EU's frontiers is respecting citizens' rights? Well, there we are. It's a question that you've uh, already talked about. Um, with France and Italy, they've started closing their borders because of the Tunisian uh, crisis. So. Well, I think there was no Tunisian crisis. There were 10,000 Tunisians who were coming north, and that doesn't look like a crisis. If you have What's several... What's France and Italy, because they suddenly closed uh, the borders? Yeah, I think they were wrong to do that. And I think or to close a border can only be done uh, in very serious situations by a European-wide decision. Such as? What, what kind of situations would you describe as being very serious? I could imagine that uh, there would be a hooligans... Uh, uh, um, Pursing through uh, because of a football game, so that uh, there can be uh, serious border uh, controls. Uh, there must, uh, there might be serious illnesses spreading out, so that uh, uh, goods are uh, being controlled. But certainly not 10,000 Tunisians uh, coming to Europe. Okay, let's uh, have a third question now to uh, Vivian Redding. Do you think the European Union can play a role in favour of legalising gay marriage in all member states? We have a very uh, uh, dissimilar situation. Some countries, uh, gay marriage, uh, Britain has gay marriage, France doesn't. Adoption, different, different policies in different countries. Gay people are not equal in the European Union. And uh, the laws on marriage and on family and the definition what is marriage and family is not a European affair. It is very clearly a national competence. Why so, though? Because uh, for, for people who suffer from not being able to marry, that's a European affair, it's their affair. Uh, yes, but you see the European Union can only do what is written in the treaty. And the treaty foresees that questions of family and of marriage remain in the national competence. Do you think that's good or not, personally? I do not have to judge on this. That is what the 27 have decided together with their parliaments and that's what I have to apply. OK, let's have a look at the next uh, question. Buongiorno, mi chiamo Irina Leone, sono una ragazza. Hello, my name is Irina Leone and I'm Dutch Italian. My parents are divorced. I'd like to know what laws exist for the children of divorced parents of different nationalities. Nei confronti dei bambini di genitori divorziati, ma di genitori di nazionalità diverse. 
I was quite surprised. There's over a million divorces in the European Union which concern uh, parents of different nationalities. So what about the children? What and there are do? going to be more and more because uh, of the free movement and because of the freedom to marry whomever you want under whatever conditions uh, uh, in, in the member state you marry. But there again, we are not looking at the marriage law nor at the law of divorce. What I have been done is to facilitate the free movement of uh, persons. So when uh, nationals from different member states want to get a divorce, that there are very clear rules what law applies and that there is not a rush to the court by the stronger partner to the disadvantage of the weaker partner and that there are very clear rules established concerning the children. OK, let's have a look at the next uh, question to Vivian Redding. Hello, I'm José Miguel García from Spain and I'd like to know what sort of laws exist to protect children on the Internet. Thank you. Do you think children need to be protected uh, from the Internet? Obviously they do in, in some cases, but uh, censorship is also a, an issue. I think parents should uh, know more about what is happening on the Internet. And that is why we have developed the Safer Internet program, where we inform teachers, we inform parents, and we allow them to help their children uh, in order to be more protected. I had also uh, meetings with the, uh, um, with the social networks, so that the, the identity of the children are secret by default so that predators uh, cannot harm our small children. What do you say to parents who say, but this is not my responsibility, there ought to be laws to protect children, there are laws to protect them from other things? Uh, there are laws to protect children. What is illegal is also illegal on the Internet. That does not prevent predators and criminals to be on the Internet. So parents need to help their children to be very cautious when they utilize this wonderful tool which the Internet is. But criminals also utilize this tool. OK, next uh, question here on iTalk. Hello, my, Hello my name is Joanna Klutter and I'm from Germany. I'd like to know what the EU is doing to protect people's personal details. Fast question, how are you protecting our personal data? And what kind of data needs to be protected? all kind of uh, personal data. There is a very big principle in Europe, and this is also inscribed in our treaties. The personal data belong to the person. And only if I give out my data, and I agree that you utilize it, you can utilize it. And I can also take back my data if I do not want you to utilize it again. And that is why we are going to come out with new laws on data protection in order to adapt them to the new world of the Internet, because the laws we have now are for the old world when there was not yet an Internet. Yes, but you're also up against huge multinational banks and companies which don't necessarily obey all these uh, European laws uh, because they want to have our data because it's uh, to make them, uh, to, to help them to make profit. That is absolutely right, and that is why we have to have very strong and forcible rules. May I answer you with one sentence? If a company wants to address itself to uh, citizens, to consumers in Europe, it has to apply European law, full stop. OK, well, that's the principle of iTalk. Uh, quick questions with uh, one, one, one sentence answers. Let's go to our last question now on today's iTalk for Vivian Redding. Uh, Will policies on asylum be harmonised throughout the European Union? Is it a good idea to have the same asylum policies throughout uh, Europe? Uh, it's a question of human rights, so we should, we should all apply the same rights. It is absolutely right that we should have the same asylum rules. And I am uh, very happy to see that mostly young people are very nervous about uh, governments handling in a very restrictive way the asylum rights. Now, uh, the asylum right is a right of human rights. Uh, if you are uh, in danger in your country of origin, we have the necessity to protect you. But we, if you are not in danger, and if you are an illegal immigrant, we have also the possibility to send you back. So 
quick answer to those who have the right to asylum and quick answers to those who are illegal immigrants. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Vivian Redding. That was uh, this week's iTalk. See you next time when you can put your questions to Daniel Cohn-Bendit, co-president of the European Greens here in the European Parliament on iTalk. See you then.